And then thanks everybody. This is our first small bites of 2022. So um, today we've got Amy Kretlow and she will be talking about the Wisconsin AIS management plan and how uh, that impacts the work that we do and our planning going forward. So I'm gonna go ahead and hand it over to Amy. Hi hey everybody, I'm Amy Kretlow. I am the statewide AIS coordinator for um, the department, or ugh, I'm already getting my, um, my words twisted here, for Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources. Um, thank you for coming to our first Small Bites, and I'm lucky enough to talk to you all today about our Wisconsin management plan. Um, I'm just going to kind of just get right into it. And I apologize. I have all these different screens. So if you see me going to look in a different way, I'm trying to figure out where everybody is here. So um, we do have um, a Wisconsin AIS management plan. Uh, we ha have had them, you know, we do, we've had one since 2003, but this one that I'll be talking about is our updated plan. And this came into effect in, there's, Differing years, it was between 2018 and 2019, but this is the current AIS management plan that we do work through. Um, there was a lot of folks involved in the making of this plan. And I apologize, I, did, I was putting some slides together this morning and I should have put all their names on, but there was a lot of people that were involved in this plan. So thank you to anybody that was on the, that's on this call that was involved. Thank you for your help in making this plan. So I'll kind of go on where, what the purpose of this plan is. As I had just stated that we did have a plan in 2003 and we have our more recent one that was, that we have um, had approved in 2018-19. This is really to help us guide the implementation of prevention, containment and control of our activities that we do in our um, state. And it also does identify seven major pathways um, that we have found that are the most um, that are the most vulnerable pathways of letting AIS into the state or moving AIS around the state. Since 2003, um, there was a reason that they did update this plan is because there was a lot of new challenges and opportunities that came about and they wanted to have that reflected in this new plan. Some of those challenges and opportunities include um, the invasion of the landscape has changed. There's new pathways that has emerged. We have new partner programs and funding. There's opportunity of opportunities that are available. We have new technologies that have been developed and are still being developed. And there's new responsibilities that we've realized. In this plan, there is three main goals, prevention, contain, and control. Um, in our past that we have really realized that Wisconsin AIS program is really good at the contain and control portion of our AIS. And one goal that we really are striving to work on moving forward is our goal one, is our prevention. With goal one and goal two combined together, that really gives us a pathways approach. And I'll talk a little bit more on our pathways in just a moment. So we're really, we're not forgetting about our goal two and goal three, but we're really having a really big um, impact. We're trying to make a bigger impact on our goal one of preventing the introduction with this plan. There are overreaching priorities. Um, I do want to talk, I'm just going to kind of highlight some of our overreaching priorities, but we do, there are priorities in the categories of pathways, management, and control, and I will explain a little bit later how you can um, get a copy of this or to look at a copy of our management plan, so if you want to learn more about what those other priorities are, you know, feel free to look at that, but for our overreaching priorities that are in this plan is we really wanted to develop communication tools and strategies and um, that promote sustainable behaviors among state's water users. We really want to implement the AIS program through strong partnerships, maintain or increase funding levels and staffing, strive to find opportunities to strengthen interstate partnerships for consistent messaging and program implementation, and we really want to strive to stop NR40 prohibited species from entering the state and to prevent the spread of our NR40 restricted species to any parts of the state.
So as I talked about earlier, the goals one, two, and three. And in goal one and two, if you actually kind of put those goals together, you start to get a pathway approach. And this is something that we're really striving on trying to work to, um, closer towards is this pathway approach. Pathways is, can be a more proactive approach. And that's what we're trying to do is be more proactive with um, invasive species entering the state instead of having more reactive. We'll still work on a reactive approach. We're always going to be you know, working on when something is found or in control, but we're really trying to strive on this proactive approach. Um, one important thing or one important difference in this new plan though, is that it implements an approach that organizes strategies and actions by invasion pathways. So that's why that's just a quote from the um, management plan and it's really, I just, I get really excited when I talk about the pathway part because this has been something that I've been working on for the past few years with the other regional staff. So I just kind of want to highlight a little bit some of the pathway work that we are kind of working on. As you can see in this picture, there are seven main pathways and under those seven pathways, there's a lot of sub pathways. And so we have staff, um, AIS staff that have really taken to these pathways and are starting to come up with new approaches um, monitoring these pathways. And one thing I do kind of want to point out with this pathway approach is it's new for our staff and it's a new way of thinking for us. We're so used to monitoring out in the field and monitoring for early detection response and you know you're putting you know these dots on a map we're so used to monitoring like that but with this pathway approach we're thinking outside of the box and thinking of how we're not just monitoring on the ground but how we're monitoring more of a situation instead of that um instead of having a dot you're looking at that whole picture of how to prevent that species from even coming into the state so it's kind of a tricky um, approach, you know, working with this pathways and it's very new and the concept is very different, but it's been, it's a kind of challenging, but it's been a fun approach. So some of the pathways that we're working on right now at this, at this present time is we are working with um, a group of people from Maritime Commerce. We're working on ballast water. We are doing a little bit of work in our canals, dams, and diversions pathway. We do have um, the pathway recreational activities and service providers touched on, and we really are paying a lot of attention to that pathway of organisms and trade. Um, I'm sure I, there is a lot of new, of you, new people on the call, but there are some seasoned um, people that are on this call. So maybe you have seen this, you know, schematic before this picture and have seen, you know, some of the pathways that we are working on. So I just kind of want to introduce a little bit of the staff that is working on these. And our organisms and trade, we're really lucky. We do have a statewide organisms and trade coordinator, Liz Tanner, and she has been doing a phenomenal job on trying to, um, you know, stop trade from coming into the state. And with, in her position, she works very closely with our law enforcement. She works closely with also one of our regional staff, um, Patrick Suula, who is working on different approaches and plans on how to better um, visit pet stores. And in those visits, being able to collect information that can be useful law, to law enforcement maybe in the future. So they're actually, with this um, group and in, in this pathway, we're really, it's exciting because they're also not only working on the pathway of stopping the invasives from coming in, but they're really breaking down a lot of walls and working together between different departments and divisions. Recreational activities and service providers. Well, we all, I have to admit, this whole state is very good at that recreational activities pathway. All of you have a little piece of work into that pathway. You. Anybody that works on clean boats, clean waters, and talks with boaters, you all just do phenomenal work with that pathway. But then adding on to the service providers, one of our regional staff, Amanda Smith, she has been working really closely with a group of um, staff and partners on how to reach better out to service providers. And everything is, you know, any of 
a lot of the stuff that we are kind of talking about between that, what Patrick and Amanda are producing is all pilot and still in works, but they're just, both of them are really taking those pathways and running with on how we can stop movement of AIS. I do want to just kind of touch a little bit on the pathway of canals, dams, and diversions that we're working on. In our state, we do have what are called glimmerous sites. And I apologize, I don't have the, it's an inner basin connection between the Mississippi and the, and Lake, the Lake Michigan and Superior Basins. I don't have the words all for the acronym um, right off the top of my head, but these sites are very important where there's, where you can have that inner basin transfer of AIS from one basin to another. So we do have a uh, Matt Puss, our, um, one of our um, AIS wetland specialists. He is really working with a lot of staff on trying to get some of these. Um, oh, Matt, I see you put in the chat. Thank you. Great Lakes Mississippi River Inner Basin Study. He's working closely with a lot of the staff on figuring out our priority of these sites and really trying to figure out um, strategies on monitoring these sites. And he's doing a phenomenal job with this pathway. And then we also have the pathway of maritime commerce. This was a pathway that was actually started by Alex Sell, one of our regional um, coordinators, our present regional coordinators, his predecessor, Jeremy Bates, had a real interest in our maritime commerce. And unfortunately, Jeremy did leave um, the department and went off to good things. But to take his place, we do have a ballast water staff, Susan Eichelkraut, who has taken on this pathway. And she does work closely with the federal government and other states and our other ballast water um, staff, Mike Gettle. And we're trying to really, we have a small team of people and we're really trying to figure out, um, you know, communications and species and, you know, just really working hard on our pathway for ballast water transfer. So those are just a little update on some of our pathway work. And because of us getting to this point is all due to our AIS management plan. So the next question would probably be, where can I find the management plan? That's really easy. All you need to do is go to our Wisconsin DNR website and in the search bar, type in Wisconsin AIS management plan. And then that's one of the first things that pop up when you're searching for it is our management plan. And then I do have the little scan code on that will get you right to the management plan. I can get a copy of this um, presentation to Jeannie and she would be able to send that out or we can put it on somewhere that's accessible for anybody to scan that code. So this is a kind of a short overview of our management plan. I do want to just leave time if there is any questions or comments or anything. But if you, you know, think of something after this half hour, please feel free to contact me at any time and I'd be able to, I would be happy to go over any information with you. And one thing I do have to say is I just had to put in some fun pictures of the grandkids. I always do that. So welcome to my grandkids world. And I had, they are Wisconsin lakes that they're on. So and I am happy to open it to any questions. So if anyone has any questions, just go ahead and unmute and jump in. Or if for some reason you can't do that, throw them in the chat. Well, I'll throw one out. Um, so we finalized the, the paperwork part of it all and got it approved, what was it, 2019, right? How long do we anticipate this staying in effect? Is there a timeline where we have to start doing updates again? Yeah, um, it is stated in our plan that we would be able to make small adjustments small adjustments every few years, and then we would really start to look at a um, bigger update in five years, which we are coming up to that point. Um, and with um, new positions and a lot of turnover, but you know, hopefully we're in a more stable position right now. Um, that is one of the things that I have been looking at is sometime within the next year or so trying to 
look at, just start the process of really kind of updating our plan. We, our plan, this present plan, they did a really good job at putting it together. There is some fine, you know, I don't think we're going to have to do a major overhaul like we did last time. 